nearing completion for my Magic Band doorbell. Uh, it's basically a battery powered using a, a couple of 18650 lithium batteries and an Arduino Nano. Um, I'll just give a quick demo of where we're up to now. So effectively it's made up of a few parts. On the very top I've got uh, a number of pixels. They are WS2812B uh, pixels um, and a NeoPixel uh, ring in the center just to help with the Mickey ears component. Um, I do have an RFID uh, reader here. I was mainly playing around with it just to include it so it could read off a magic band um, and I've got a switch which I've put down the side here, which will allow me to flip between whether I'm using it purely as a doorbell or whether I want to use it as permanently on so that the RFID reader can pick up if a magic band comes near. So underneath the RFID reader, you start to see all the components that make it up. Uh, so at the top is a TPL5110 uh, in a one-shot configuration. So effectively it's pressing that button there. And that will uh, effectively send power through to the Arduino Nano, which is round on the other side. Just stuck on the back here. And I've got one of the pins configured out um, so that when the, um, when the code finishes running, it will send a power um, signal through to the TPL, uh, TPL5110 to let it know it's finished. And that will turn off power to the device until you press that button again. Uh, underneath here, I've got a 433 MHz transmitter. Um, I've kind of got it under tape just so it doesn't short out on anything at this point. It was just a cheap one off AliExpress. Um, it's only a couple of bucks in terms of cost. And I've configured that to send out um, uh, a signal uh, just signifying the same as an on-off switch in X10 code. Uh, so for my home automation, I've got an, an RFX comm uh, receiver and from that I can pick up the signal, hook it into my home automation and from there I can, I can run some scripts. So I've got some uh, wall based, uh, wall mounted pads um, and that's got some audio. So currently when you uh, press the button here in the background you'll hear uh, a cute little uh, sound clip that I got from the Shanghai Disney, the Toy Story one. Uh, and one of the lifts um, it had a cute little clip where it says level 2 from the alien. So I'll just do that now and you'll hear it in the background. So that's basically sending the X10 signal via that to the RFX comm receiver. Um, and then based on that I've got an event where it's playing the MP3 there. Now second of that and down the bottom is a DF player. So on here it's very hard to see. I won't pull it out. But underneath here I've got... Um, an SD card plugged into the DF player and the pinouts are coming from the uh, Arduino Nano um, and these two white cables here are currently going through to a temporary speaker in the middle there. Um, I've got a, another speaker that will fit that area and be slightly louder um, coming from China but it's been two months and postage is terrible right now um, so I've just not stopped waiting um, and taking an old uh, earphone speaker, chuck that in there for now. So at least you can hear what's going on. Uh, but that will be replaced. Um, but effectively, that's the bit that plays the Magic Band tune from there. It's got a little built-in amplifier, so it can it can go all right. Um, in the middle here, that's where the 18650 batteries are. Uh, both of them are lithium. Um, I've not done a full calculation on how long it's on, but it's pretty low. We're talking... Um, microamps of power that have been consumed when it's in a standby mode. There are detailed specs on the TPL5110 in terms of how much power it consumes. Um, but because it's not always continuously, uh, sorry, because the Arduino is not always continuously running, uh, it only runs when it needs to. Um, and my other issue is when it's powered on, I need power to be going to the LED rings as well. Um, having that that one-shot timer switch makes makes it last a whole lot longer. And a little bit ugly, but round on the side is the Arduino Nano um, with all the, I think they've got all the pinouts for the various different things. So um, there's about five or six pins which go for the RFID reader. One pinout that's going to go through to the um, uh, 433 megahertz transmitter and a three volt output for that. 
Um, the lights are five volt. Uh, the RFID reader is three volts. I'm using the three volt pinout. Um, and the MP3 player will run on five volts, but I do have to put a one kilo ohm um, resistor onto the line that is the input into the DF player. Um, otherwise it does have problems. Um, beyond that, that is really it. I've got a lot of a lot more work to be done. Um, it'll be replacing the speaker with a proper speaker. Um, certainly cleaning it up a whole lot more than, than where it is. Um, I've got this outer casing that's going to go around it. I've got to complete the um, sanding on that and then I'll uh, effectively fill it, paint it, um, so it'll come up as a, a much more polished version there. I just didn't like the the lines that kind of come from it and the fact that you can kind of see all the edges on the on the circle um, so we can improve that over time but there's also a little switch down here which you can turn it into a, a permanent on mode um, and I've got that for when I want to kind of put it into a, an RFID reader mode where it'll be constantly wanting to, to check um, so if I flick that across now it'll turn on it does a single play of um, the lighting effect, the little magic band sound, and hey presto. Now, from here, if I use one of the little RFID tags that come with the, the little RFID reader, I can place it on there, and, and hey presto, it works great. Um, so let's try that with a magic band. Now, at the moment, it's not programmed, so it's actually going to do nothing anyway, but like there was, there was nothing that was coming through. Um, so what we're going to do now... Let's move that around a little bit. Um, we're going to change the code on this the, the Arduino, um, and we're going to change it to the dump info um, generic uh, program. So let me plug this in, and we're going to upload some code. And that way we can see what is being spat out. So now we've got it plugged into the USB port. <sighs> we're going to come into uh, do a deployment of this dump dump info uh, default sketch you can find it under uh, file examples mfrc522 and there's one called dump info so it's it's in one of your exa example files when you've added the library um, so we're just going to upload that so compiling uploading Great, and now we're going to open up the serial monitor so we can see, let's move that over here, what's coming through. So first one is we know it's working correctly because we've got the firmware version that's coming up here. It's not throwing any errors. It's not 0x00 zero 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 or anything like that. Um, so we know we'll wire correctly. Um, so we'll take an example. We'll use one of the tags that come with it. We'll hold that on it, and you'll see that it's now running out a whole lot of info as it reads that card multiple times. They also supply you with like a door card reader like that. So we'll do the same thing. Hey Presto, that's coming through as well. And let's try with a magic band. And nothing. Uh, let's try a different magic band. Nothing. And the last magic band I've got is nothing now the interesting thing is that all three of these magic bands are a couple of years old i do know that they're battery powered but i did think that the rfid component was working without batteries um so that's where we're at now i don't necessarily want to go ahead and, and try and buy one um just for this testing purposes uh, i'll probably buy one later on in the year when we uh, well maybe next year when we plan to go back um but I thought maybe let's go have a look at what's inside the Magic Band 2. Um, so if we come back down here, here is the inside puck um, from a Magic Band 2. Now I found plenty of videos that did a breakdown of the Magic Band 1, which is uh, where it's all kind of embedded into the strap, but not so much of the 2. So all I've done so far, I haven't completely opened it yet, was I just chucked it in a vise and gave it a bit of a squeeze, put a screwdriver in the end, and it just starts to pop out. And it's hopefully it'll just keep popping out. And there we go. And here inside, it 
see if we can get some focus on that. So CR sixteen thirty two battery. Uh, we'll pop that out. And that is all that's inside. There we go. So three volt sixteen thirty two. Now start to see the model number there is. So the interesting thing seems to be that the battery does still work. still you'll see there's definitely three volts still coming through it in which case it's not the battery so and that means this particular model does not work so we might have to look at what frequencies that the chipset uses on here so now we've got the chip number we can look up the spec part for it and see what it needs so I gave up trying to search for the spec sheet for the Nordic 31512M chipset. Uh, seems I, like many others, uh, have done kind of pulled in or teardowns of the, the Magic Band. I uh, found the chip and have been trying to find out a little bit more info about the VRF components on it. Um, I couldn't find anything. I did find a couple of YouTube clips of people doing similar type projects. One of them using the same RFID card reader as I. Um, he did have some success with uh, um, what appeared to be a Magic Band 2 with a new battery but had similar problems that I'm seeing with a battery that was flat on one of them. Uh, I've sent a few messages just to see if I can get any more info on them. Uh, if I do I might come back to the project otherwise I'll leave it as this final state um, which is as a doorbell. Um, I've got the pride of place below the uh, custom haunted mansion sign. Uh, to the office and does the room there we go I've disabled the actual doorbell sound which plays the haunted ma uh, mansion tune um, just in the interest of avoiding a copyright strike on the video um, the uh, last remaining thing to do is probably to kill the boot bootloader on the Arduino board just to get a slightly quicker startup time when you press the button. But otherwise, she's done. Thanks for watching.